mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Well, welcome home, family. It's your, your mom, mom and dad. Your mom and dad, Hello. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Hello, Lee. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. I'm, I mean, it's a it's a chilly day outside in Los Angeles, so Ooh. I am ready. How dare you? <laughs> Lee and I are now in a positive headspace oh, because yeah. of it. I'm like, let's create. Let's do this thing. When it's sunny, I have Give no energy. Me the sun. <laughs> I have no energy when it's sunny. Right now, I'm ready to rock and roll. You know what, guys? <laughs> Their brains are very different than mine. We were just talking about this yes. before we started. It's like, they like gloomy days. Oh, yeah. Okay? I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I'm like, when the sun comes out, it's like, life life is alive. Gloom is everything I understand the occasional gloom, but like, all it makes me want to do is like, watch movies and chill. It doesn't make me, it doesn't productive. inspire me to so create a real estate empire. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you don't have that if Zach that, if energy. If that was my you know, goal. You don't have that Zach energy. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The gloom doesn't fucking help. <laughs> the gloom is in your mind. Um, but also, in, in, a, in a, another thing that we were talking about before this was how people think. And Jess and Lee think so differently than I do. Mm -hmm. they're, they're always thinking about like... Worst case scenario. Worst case. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, Let me prepare my brain, King. Let me get in the, the full flow of like, well, the worst thing that could happen is and let me have my right. list. No, I just am so... It's so interesting to me because I totally understand thinking about the bad things that can happen. But they'll go like when like we were talking about like a rat in the pool. There was like a rat and Lee was like swimming in a pool and there was like a rat, a dead, in rat. The, a dead yeah. rat in the pool. <laughs> right. And it was like, oh, shoot. And they got it out of the pool. Right. I kind of have, after the dead rat is out of the pool, I'm kind of done with dead rat. A little bit. There's like a thought maybe of like, oh, is, was there any like poop in the pool or something? Oh, we seem to be good. These guys will then continue <laughs> to be like, we're Googling. There's an hour of Googling. Of, of like, like, am I safe to be swimming in this pool? Do I have bubonic plague? Like, 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 uh, like, do I need to get any sort of vaccinations? Like all of this. Yeah. 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 I, you know what? Now, I don't know if it's better or worse for my anxiety, but what I do is I worst case scenario at everything and then I'm prepared and I feel like it helps my anxiety. I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm riddled with anxiety. <laughs> I want to go with the second one because it's like web MDing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like whatever you want in life, you can get out of web MD. So if you have a small scratch, you can find an article I know. that says you have something that's life threatening. Yeah. Sure. You know what I mean? And so that's kind of where I go with that mentality is like, Whatever, I guess it's more like whatever you're looking for, you're, you'll find. So if you're looking for worst case, you'll find yeah, worst but case. If I wasn't a WebMD queen, wouldn't you miss me crawling into bed at midnight and waking you up and being like, Evan, I think there's a problem <laughs> every single night. I would say there's nothing I want less <laughs> than to always feel like... We're on the verge. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that what I love about you is that I keep is your, life exciting is your and personality nervous. <laughs> and your charm and your beauty. One thing I wouldn't mind just kind of swapping out is that everything in life is the end of the world. You know what I mean? Like there's a little thunder at night. It's like, I think that's the plate tectonic shifting. And I think there's going to be a massive earthquake. And I think we're going to fall into Evan, the sun. And Evan, I'm going, I think it was someone taking their trash <laughs> out. The weather like, I think <laughs> that's the sound of, of George next door pulling his trash cans out. I don't think that was the plates of the earth shifting. <laughs> and at any point, our house will fall into Sing, the Well, core. you know, I'm scared of sinkholes. I mean, oh. I, yes. <laughs> I'm terrified of a sinkhole. And Evan knows the second that there is weather that's a little different, he knows he's going to wake up to me standing over him saying, 
It's earthquake weather, babe. <laughs> it's it's earthquake weather. She always says the big know. one's coming. Well, it is. Don't okay, me, the big no, one's coming. Don't get me, not, I need don't to get her a shirt that says on, the big one's coming. Do not get me started on that because you know that I'll send you a million more articles right. about it. Don't even say it. Knock on wood. So I just uh, what I'm curious. The reason why I bring this up too is I'm curious to everyone listening. Like, is this a common even marriage dynamic mm-hmm. where like? One person is the person who thinks about all the like uh, catastrophes in the world or the possibilities of things breaking and destroying and dying. And is there one person who's just a little bit like, chill out? Is that a normal dynamic? By the way, I saw numerous people respond to one of our past episodes where we were discussing, does a lot of relationships have the one is a cringe lord and the other is a crusty king dynamic. (laughs) And indeed, I got a lot of messages, people saying it's true. One of us is a cringe lord and one of us is a crusty king. We need to do merch. Meaning one of us is cringy and one of us is kind of a a grump. Should we do merch? One shirt says crusty king, one says cringe lord. Because I feel like, (laughs) and then you buy it for your partner and buy one for you. Like this kind of, or maybe they come in like a set. You buy them in a set. Buy it for your partner who doesn't listen to the podcast. I'm sure that won't be offensive to them at all. To like, to just give them a shirt that says cringe lord or shirt that says Krusty King. I'm sure that won't start an argument. I think the only way it works is if you wear your shirt at the same time. So it's like, a, we're in this together. You know what I mean? But, but you can't just buy someone cringe lord. True. You know what True. I mean? That's not, a, that's not great. Well, but, I don't know. Maybe maybe we got potential merch coming. But I also <laughs> think, but I also think the, to add to this dynamic is I think the more someone is like the way they are, it pushes the other person to be more the way they are. Does that make sense? Sure. So if someone's scared of everything, then the person who's a little bit more chill doubles down on the chill. And the person who's afraid of everything is like, why aren't you afraid yeah, of everything? Because nothing sends so then they're going to get more, more fearful to be like, you need to be more yeah, afraid of this. Because nothing sends me into more of a spiral than when I'm like, oh my gosh, the sinkhole is happening. Yes. And Evan's like, doesn't even acknowledge it at all and I'm like wanting to shake him and be like I need you to read all these articles because when I'm around someone it's like dude read are you guys listening to this <laughs> reading articles about sinkholes <laughs> What? But are when, we but doing? Then, but then this is why that I need friends like Lee because when I'm with someone like Lee <sighs> and we can talk about it, it brings me peace because I'm like, oh look, he gets it. Right. We understand each yeah, other. And we're still alive. Yeah, and we're here we are alive. to tell the tale. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and it's gonna, you know, of course, you're you're living on the narrative that like Evans now. 20,000 feet deep in the sinkhole he should have listened to us well duh I'm always so right that. at the end of the day I'm always right <laughs> alright we're gonna take a quick pause we're gonna take a quick pause and then let's get into what we're here to talk about and kind yes, of break down of what our little sketch is gonna be oh, okay yeah. uh, but first family support for today's episode comes from One Skin okay that Vanderpump Rules finale that we are going to dive into was so upsetting. I swear I aged 10 years watching it. Um, So it's time for one skin for me. If you've ever thought to yourself, what if we could reverse the root causes of aging? Then listen closely. Our new sponsor, One Skin, puts science and research first, founded by a team of four female PhD level longevity scientists with over 15 years of experience. One Skin set out to not just decrease the visible signs of uh, skin aging, but to treat the root causes of skin aging. Listen, we both started using One Skin's products about a month ago, and I am seeing a difference, okay? And I love One Skin because they believe the purpose of skincare is not just about the way it looks, but to optimize our skin biology so that it's more resilient. They create next level skincare. It's It's so good. They have the face moisturizer, eye topical supplement, um, the topical body supplement. I I use them every single day. Mm -hmm. I seriously love them. One Skin's products are formulated with their OS01 peptide as the primary active ingredient to support the skin's ability to resist the effects of intrinsic and extrinsic aging factors. Their flagship product, OS01 Face, that we have been using is clinically proven to strengthen the skin barrier and improve key skin health markers. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company, okay? One Skin addresses skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root causes of aging so skin behaves, feels, and appears younger. It's time to get started with that face, eye, and body routine at a discounted rate today. Get 15% off with the code MOMDAD at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code MOMDAD. We only have one body, one skin, age healthy with one skin. Um, Okay, so like we were saying, mentioned the VPR finale. That is 
what we are going to be going over today. Not only the Vanderpump Rules finale, but also, of course, some of the tea that's come from that, from interviews, Watch What Happens Live with Ariana and Andy Cohen, um, a bunch of different things that I was hearing. So we're going to be discussing that today. And then we have a Friday episode this week, and I know typically we don't do reality TV on the Friday episode, and we were talking about doing then the reunions on Wednesday. Well, here's the thing. We're two on the edge of our seat. We have to. (laughs) Because we've now become so deep in Vanderpump rules. So we will be today recapping the finale Vanderpump episode. If you're listening to this on Wednesday, then tonight is the first episode of the reunion. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we will be recapping the first episode of the reunion on Friday's episode. Welcome to VanderCon. This is VanderCon. This is Vanderpump week. Okay. We're going to keep recapping reunion episodes, but this week we're doing a double finale and then episode one of the reunion it's too fire it's too much it's too good and honestly i know i said last week that evan's new personality trait is vanderpump 24 7 and that he is literally just like soaking it up like a sponge I love it. it's now crossed over to this level with evan so evan has been extremely busy with work you are yeah. in a season of evan's working you know all day seven days a week like no no breaks with yep. your music biz mm-hmm. um so that's how it's been the past couple weeks mm-hmm. and typically evan during these crazy busy work weeks he's not a texter because you have to be he you have to be on top with the clients 24 sure. 7 so we know this i know this that you know <clears throat> if i need anything you'll get back to me if right. i but but you're not going to be texting but me i'm not the day. i'm not doing like oh my god you know what's crazy no I'm not no we're that, not having whatever. casual texting if Evan has any moment throughout his day, like where he's in the bathroom at his work, I'm getting a voice memo about a memory that Evan had from an episode that he just watched of Andrew. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so good. It's insane. In my phone, just, and I have, I've stopped responding to them because I'm like, I don't even know what to say back yeah, to Yeah, what these. the hell? <laughs> you're like, you're not texting, but then the few I send, you then ghost me on. Okay. Like, <laughs> All right. like, I'm like, you know, I'm in the middle of something and I'm receiving like seven five minute voice memos in a row about like what James said to Schwartzy and Evan like dying laughing. I understand too. Like, what do you say to back to that? Ha ha. Like, I totally, you know, no, I understand. I, and I'm listen, I, I love to listen. <laughs> I love to listen to it. But I'm like, wow, I'm the- communicating and you're not valuing my communication. OK, fake it. OK, <laughs> the Vanderpump obsession has crossed. Yes, over. it's amazing. And so, of course, we're like, we got to talk about it today. And we got to talk about it, the reunion on Friday. Yeah, it's just too hot, hot heat. You know it's what I mean? Too much. If it was normal, like episodes, we'd be like waiting. But it's too hot, hot heat. It's too much. It's Tonight's going to be hot, hot heat. And because it's hot, hot heat, we hot, hot heat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> too many? <laughs> um, okay. But before we dive into yes. our thoughts on that Vanderpump finale episode, I do want to say this quick bachelor in the news catch up number one they dropped the like so at first they had dropped the um photo for the announcement for charity season Mm -hmm. stunning they just dropped the teaser Mm -hmm. and it is getting i got goosebumps all over me it is getting me so excited walking through the gates of heaven through the gates of heaven with (laughs) roses everywhere and then there's a throne it is full like disney disney princess magic yes and it's getting me very excited because i feel like a lot of times when we know that there's a great season coming they put out quite a magical teaser and that was like powerful Whoa. magical teaser so i cannot wait it's gonna be like returning home you know what i mean I it really truly is returning home whenever that show comes back on it's just like you kind of settle in. You're like, oh, I know. I know this. I know. You know what I mean? I know. And also, I wanted to say this, too. Obviously, I have been such a fan of charities during Zach's season. Yeah. But I just want to say a shout out to Charity, who I'm sure is so... I can't imagine how unbelievably busy you are at a time like this. It's just like 24-7 having to film promos, yeah. interviews, everything. 
She reached out to me oh. after she heard about Nana passing away really? and sent me a very sweet message. Oh my god! And I'm just like, this is our bachelorette people. Okay, you can do no wrong. You'll be zero <laughs> criticized. Nothing will happen to you the entire season. We support everything you do. Which we already were going to. Let's be real. We love charity. But I just thought that I just wanted to yeah, share that. Awesome. That was so kind, especially like, you know, in the midst of, I'm sure, like I said, every busyness that mm -hmm. she has going on to reach out. So... This is the Bachelorette we have, people, and mm. I am thrilled. Let's go. It's going to be exciting. I'm so excited. Another thing I'm thrilled about okay. is they finally did it. They finally announced that there will officially be the senior Bachelor that they have promised us for years. And we said, you won't do it, ABC. You won't do this. They're doing it. What? I am just... It's called the Golden Bachelor. Right, the Golden Bachelor. I'm so interested on what's going to go down on this thing. Um, so am I. Like, is it going to be well behaved? Is it going to be wild? Is there going to be backstabbing? Is it going to be chill and mature? Like, part of me just hopes these seniors go wild and they're like, I'm getting it all out. I mean, for me, I'm like, if I'm older in life, especially if, you know, who knows, because there are a lot of people who are older who do have social media, but I would imagine there's probably a handful of people going on the show who aren't present on social media. So they right. can kind of do whatever, you know, get their rocks off and not worry about getting any kickback social media wise, because maybe they don't have any. Do we know how old? I believe it's between 60 and 69. Okay. I believe. I could be wrong. Okay. But it's not so like, like our parents' age. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, our grandparents' age. It's <laughs> Which like is our. Insane. I would love <laughs> that. They just film it in like an elder community. <laughs> I would love that. I want them to do all levels. I also want them to do a bachelor, a middle aged bachelor, like 45. Can you imagine? There's so much drama that comes from the Real Housewives. Yeah. The most drama, right? It's unbelievable. And they're kind of in that like 45 to 50 age demo. Yeah. I feel like a middle-aged bachelor would crush. Look at Vanderpump. Everybody's like in their late 30s, early 40s, right? I guess that's true. I always forget so, that Sandoval is so 40. You're, and you're dealing with the most insane people ever. So yeah. it's like, that's where the real like people have gone yeah, through go, it go 35 to 50 <clears throat> and, and we'll show you some, some heat maybe wild heat right <laughs> we'll those, show you where the drama those hits. people are done with trying to look a certain way and they're just trying to go for it yeah no we just want to live our fame we want to live like our this. fame truth i just think it would go so well I that so age too. i really really do but i think 60 to 69 is gonna be I think it'll be really fun amazing so I be really fun I bet, you, I bet you'll get some uh, like a good group of like quality people and then you'll have some real characters like oh, some real sure. like people that are just coming out of the woodwork 100%. you know what i mean like i think what i'm praying for is that this show explodes and it goes really well and that then they do a season of you know the golden bachelorette and then they do bachelor in paradise with the seniors because yeah a Bachelor in Paradise season with the seniors <laughs> on the beach, dude, <laughs> would be or do, Florida. Do it, <laughs> Florida, Florida said it. Boca yeah, Florida. Raton, or do a cruise, a senior cruise, Bachelor in Paradise oh, style. That's Come sick. on, a senior cruise is the vibe. Come on, you know what I'm looking forward to is senior game. <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? Like, what's some fifties, nineteen sixties game? You know what I mean? Like, what what kind of lines will they be throwing out? Be like, I haven't used this line since I was twenty five. There's know? gonna like, be a lot of golden fedora. You're crazier oh. than a brush. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or whatever. You know, they, <laughs> I don't know what like kind of lines they'll have. But like, what are some turn of the century lines? You know, <laughs> you're also, hotter uh, than. Two Wonder Bread. You're hotter than a PBJ on a Saturday. I don't know what kind of item I'm just making this up. But I, but I want to know, like, what is what is old game like? Listen, these people are 60. <laughs> They're not 80. We are so age it's, hating it's right our, now. It's our parents' <laughs> right, age. I, know, I think it's going to be wild. I think it's going to be spicy. Yeah. That's what I think. But I still think that they're going to have to be careful legally yeah. with the games that they're choosing to play. Yes, it's going to have sure to be a little more like... Like, let's you be know, cautious. Injury conscious. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Anywho, so that's coming out this fall. Sweet. 
Also, they said that Bachelor in Paradise has been renewed, so we will be getting Bachelor in Paradise. There are rumors circulating that this season of Bachelor in Paradise is going to be full of leads coming onto the beach. So we're going to have some big names in Bachelor Nation, I believe, gracing the sand. Thrilled about that. Very excited. And then they officially announced that The Bachelor is renewed again. So we're going to be getting The Bachelorette. We're going to be getting Bachelor in Paradise, The Golden Bachelor, and The Bachelor. We're so we are Bachelor up, is baby. And we are going to be busy this year. So that's what that's looking Amazing. like. Amazing. So very excited. Very is excited. it Vander time yet? Yeah, let's get into Vanderpump. God. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> it's like, shut up and Enough talk Vanderpump. Enough of everything. <laughs> okay, so before we discuss this finale, yeah. which... A lot of people were saying that this finale episode was the best episode of reality TV that has ever existed. And I have to say, as devastating and enraging as it was to watch, it I, I agree. I think it was the best reality TV episode I've ever seen. I couldn't believe it. It's just like the best thing I could best word I could come up with is it's like pulverizing. Yes. Like it pulverizes the people watching it. The mm-hmm. people are who are in it are getting pulverized. Like it's just like there's not like generally in all these episodes, there's three or four timelines going at once. But there's one. There's one, one thing. And it's just following basically Sandoval and Ariana at the same time. And it's just like whatever they're doing, that's what you're experiencing. And it's all regarding one topic, one situation. And it's exhausting. I mean, it's like emotionally exhausting. You're like. You feel like you're a part of it. Oh, a thousand percent. I w- so I watched it probably three times. <laughs> and even with that, I'm sure in this episode, when we recap, I've missed things. Like right. there was so much happening and so much information. And like, like you said, it was exhausting. I felt like I had to, maybe that's why I ended up watching it three times because I was literally having to take breaks yeah. like emotionally through this episode because it was just too much. But it was also very awesome. But it was also, like I said, the best episode of reality TV I've ever seen. It is insane. Now, something to think about before we recap this, which is now a brain worm in my mind. And I'm going to be going to bed tonight just grinding over this. So I all just had a episode that he dropped where Charlie from Vanderpump was on it. And then Kate Arthur, who is a journalist who's covered a lot of um, Vanderpump and is like a big Vanderpump fan. So Charlie was saying on the podcast that she was nervous because she believes that a lot of thoughts and opinions are going to shift and change as these reunion episodes drop. And I'm like, what What is is going to happen? Because... As far as I can see it, you know, we know how we feel about a few of these characters. And then we also have seen in these past few months that specifically the women have all like come together and are supporting each other. So I'm like, what do you mean opinions and thoughts are going to change? And so they were discussing this with her and she was like, you know, I don't know. I don't quite know. But I have this idea that we're going to find out potentially that more people knew than we're aware of. That's what her thought uh, is. So her who thought knows? is more people knew, so it's going to kind of uncover more of a conspiracy. Right. So who who knows what, yeah. it, you know, she was saying she's <clears throat> unsure, but that's what her thought is, that we're going to find out that there was more going on behind the scenes where people knew about stuff. There was more cover-ups going on and maybe even more drama. And so then Kate... Uh, Arthur, who is the journalist, was interviewing the executive producer and was asking the executive producer, hey, uh, why aren't you guys filming right away for season 11? Yeah. Like, why, why, why is there these few month breaks? Like, we need to know what's happening with these people as it's happening. Yeah, of course. And the executive producer said, something's going to come out. And Kate said she believes it's going to be in the one on one sit downs with Andy, potentially with his sit down with Raquel. Mm hmm. Something comes out that the executive producer said, we all felt like for the sake of the cast, we needed to hit pause for a second. So I'm like, what is going on? And she said she was pressing, pressing the, um, the executive producer, like, can you give me something? And he was like, I, you know, I I can't share anything with you. 
But point is, as we go into episode one tonight, don't know if we're going to find out that certain people knew, if there was more going on. What happened? I mean, I I can already tell just from the vibe. What? Sandoval hooked up with Lisa. (laughs) They're having an affair, a double affair. Lisa knew about Raquel. (laughs) And Raquel, actually, that whole thing didn't even happen. Lisa planted that as a thing. Sandoval went, great idea. (laughs) We'll do this whole thing to hide our much more insane affair. Ken's devastated. (laughs) And Ken and Ariana are starting to talk. And that is the drama. And they're having to figure that all out. You know what I mean? Lisa's going to come for your throat. (laughs) (laughs) And by the way, in honor of Ariana, I'd like to announce that I will be calling Sandoval Sando because she makes sandwiches. He's Sando now. Do you think, though, that she makes sandwiches so we shouldn't call him Sando? I think he's Sando because she can, you know. She can just eat him up eat and him spin up him and out if she him wants out to. If she wants All right, to. I like it. Sando. <laughs> Sando. His new name is Sando. Um, but yeah, so I'm just saying, going into this, yeah. I'm now, after hearing that and hearing that being processed, I'm like, oh, shit. What is about to be revealed? What are we going to find out? Again, it made it seem like it's going to be at the very end of these three reunion episodes or in a one-on-one, and we don't know what it is. But that's what Kate was saying from the executive producer. But then again, also, Charlie was saying, I think we're going to find out a lot that's going to be more hurtful than you even imagined. Because executive producer was telling journalist Kate, sorry, I know this is a web that I'm weaving, but executive producer was telling journalist Kate that, you know, most of the time reunions are there to kind of provide like closing chapter, like, hey, we're all talking about our feelings at the end of this. He was saying that this series of reunions is providing more information and more is coming out that the cast didn't even know about. I just don't even, I just don't know what, like what could, could it be? be? Cause it's like, it's already blown up. It's already devastating. It's already the worst case scenario. It's like, what could possibly be worse? And you know, maybe there's some money stuff going on. Maybe like maybe there's some issue financially with someone stole something. You know what I mean? Cause it's like yeah. for you to hold off filming yeah, what would take... Isn't an emotional thing almost. It almost seems like... I mean, I mean maybe I mean, if someone's obviously, really struggling, obviously yeah. Obviously, there's a real issue there, but I'm more talking about, like, they've already done such emotional damage by, like, blowing up an entire world, basically, their whole friend circle, relationship, everything, that it's like, I can't imagine two more people knowing or, like, something like that causing enough problem to not film. And maybe it's got to be, like, really messed up to where, like... They got to get a handle on the current situation in order to like. Film. Right. I know one of the rumors was that Raquel might be pregnant, but Bravo said that's not that's not the that case. That would be. I mean, mental. can you imagine? Can you imagine? Dude. <laughs> I, t- I would have no words. <laughs> I would have <laughs> no insane. words. Um, so just wanted to say that at the top, because here we are and we're going to start recapping our thoughts. But apparently things might shift and yeah. change as this reunion comes to light and things yeah. start to come to light. So forgive well, us if we have, you know, now are we gonna know bad tonight? takes. I, like or I said, like I, I don't know. It, it, it made it seem like I think the whole series of the three reunion episodes are going to be more information and shift perspectives a little bit. I, again, I don't know what that means because right. Charlie didn't clarify what that meant on the podcast at Got all. It. So who I don't know what that means. But I think the big bombshell is at the very end. And I believe it's going to be with a one-on-one. At least that's what it, it sounded like. That it. It's going to be a, a one-on-one with Andy. Got it. Okay. One of the sit downs. So Woo, we go. shall see. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's start from the top. How we were feeling about yes. this episode. Uh, quick pause though. So we have a patch of land in our backyard that I've always wanted to turn into a veggie garden. And now is the time. Okay. And guess what? I'm going to have the best, most nutrient rich dirt to grow those veggies because of my Lomi. My Lomi transforms my garbage into gold at the push of a button. Lomi is a countertop electric composter that turns food scraps to dirt in under four hours. Guess I said four hours and it's countertop. So it fits so easily anywhere. It's like so incredible. It, yeah, it looks amazing too. <laughs> yes, yeah, seriously. Yes, we are loving composting. 
Plus. It's made cooking at home even more fun. Ember loves using our Lomi, and there's no food rotting in our garbage and smelling up the kitchen. Thanks to Lomi, we only have to take out the trash once a week, and it's hassle-free, mess-free experience. That's right. So we can turn our waste into nutrient-rich dirt that we can feed to our plants, lawn, or garden, and that also means that it's not going to landfills and producing methane gas. We get to help the environment and make life easier. Whether you want to start making a positive environmental impact or just grow a beautiful garden, Lomi is perfect for you. Head to Lomi.com slash mom dad and use the promo code mom dad to get $50 off your first Lomi. That's $50 off when you head to L-O-M-I.com slash mom dad and use promo code mom dad at checkout. Thank you, Lomi, for sponsoring this episode. Also a great gift great for gift. Father's Day coming up. Just great FYI. Gift. Um, so everyone, you know that we love our pets. I know the family here loves their pets, but something that we don't necessarily love can be some of the stinkiness that comes along with that. OK, if you have a cat, for example, that smell uh, would come from the litter box. And I know that can stink up your whole place. Well, all that smell can change if you switch to pretty litter. Nothing beats Pretty Litter's ability to instantly trap odor. It's ultra absorbent and it's lightweight, low dust, and one six pound bag works for up to a month without clumping. That means no more wasting litter. And on top of it all, what can really bring peace of mind, Pretty Litter's crystals change color to indicate early signs of potential illnesses in your cat, like urinary tract infections, kidney issues, and more. And if that wasn't enough, Pretty Litter ships free right to your door so you won't run out, won't have those huge kitty litter bags taking up space, and even better, you won't have to lug that huge tub from a store to your car and into your house, okay? I know since my family members who have cats switched to Pretty Litter years ago, they swear by it. They say it's a game changer. They are never going back. My family who has cats loves, loves, loves mm-hmm. their Pretty Litter. Uh, make the switch today. Go to prettylitter.com slash momdad and use code momdad to save 20% on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash momdad, code momdad to save 20% on your first order. PrettyLitter.com slash mom dad code mom dad terms and conditions apply. See site for details. Okay, so right. this episode, one of the wildest things to me to think about with this episode is that we start with a timestamp yeah. that says March 1st. So we see Watch What Happens Live with Sheena and Raquel, where they both say Sandoval's the hottest at the same time. And Sheena looks at Raquel and is like, you didn't say Schwartz? Like, your whole storyline is with Schwartz. Yeah. And she's like, Sandoval. And you see her face just shift. It's like, also be better at lying. <laughs> like, Make anyone up. <laughs> well, he said, Tom, who's hotter, Tom Schwartz or Tom Sandoval? Just it's, say Schwartz. Yeah, say to St- Schwartz. I mean, that's insane, dude. Like, no <laughs> offense. I know not the brightest bulb, but like... That's an that's a layup. I mean, I could not believe it. But I also have thoughts about Raquel maybe wanting to get caught. Oh, interesting. I, I feel like there were certain moments where the lying was not fully on the same page. Obviously, this affair went on for seven months, so there was a lot of same page lying happening for them to be able to cover this up. But there were numerous times where Raquel came in and kind of threw in comments, even with her having that terrible conversation with Ariana where she was asking about their sex life. It's almost like she was playing with fire just to see how close she could get. I felt like there was a level of like, we're going to push this so that it ends up getting found out so that we can be together. And maybe, you you know, Sando, you know, Sando was like, dude, I promise we're going (laughs) to, we're going (laughs) to, we're going to reveal this soon. Like I, dude, I swear I'm going to break up with Ariana tomorrow. I bet Sandoval told Raquel a hundred times he was going to break up with Ariana and then never did. He was the classic, like, I'm going to get divorced and then never does. Exactly. And then it blows up. You know what I mean? He's got the, he's got the, the affair going, you know, the classic archetype of the guy who has the affair going and he has the wife and kids. And he's like promising the affair that he's going to break up. He's going to get divorced soon and then never does. And then she contacts the wife and then the whole thing blows. You yeah. Know? So I got, I was getting a little bit of the vibe where it almost felt like Raquel was trying to have moments of like pushing it out there a little bit so that, her and Sando could be together. Mm. That's what I think. That's the suspicion that I'm getting from a few of the actions. Got it. But then we have that moment and then we find out later from Ariana that that was the day at Tom Tom during Sando's show. 
that she saw the recording of the FaceTime. So that's when she found all of that out and she contacted uh, Raquel, Sheena. Well, that was March 1st. Mm -hmm. Apparently, March 2nd, Ariana contacted producers or someone contacted producers. I believe it was Ariana uh, and then said, this is what happened and told them all about the affair. March 3rd, we are filming in their homes. Think about that. She finds out the night of March 1st, contacts producers March 2nd, filming March 3rd. It was like emergency cameras in the house. So what we're getting is the most raw, like this just happened, I just found out footage that you could have. And when I tell you, knowing that makes Tom Sandoval's reactions and interactions even more despicable to me. Well, the open opening scene. Can we talk about the opening scene? Please. Okay. The opening scene is <clears throat> that them waking up, her on the couch, him waking up. Also, hey, be up earlier than her if you're cheating. You know what I mean? Not, I'm not just saying. Like, it's weird if you're sleeping in. You yeah, know what like, I mean? It's like, kind yeah, of a weird move. No, like she hasn't slept one wink, and you were like coming down. It's probably I, like 11 a.m. It's like a bad. Noon. It's a bad sign when you're having beauty rest. And you destroyed your partner's life. I think it makes more sense for you to at least be up a little earlier to at least like make her feel like maybe you have a little anxiety about it. But the fact that you're just like, oh, got that good. He's like sludging around his slippers. You just hear him like into the kitchen. He's like, you want anything? And my question is, just for starters, do you think it was production that made them sleep together that they sleep in the same house? Because I'm going like, no, Evan, they still Live I know in the same still, house together. My question is this. I mean, it's blowing my mind that Sandoval is not like in an apartment at Schwartz's at a random friend of his. We don't even know, but it's just a buddy of his. Like, how is he not cra- crashing on a couch? Maybe he how, did that night and then he had to show up that morning. I mean, for he filming, looked, but he looked like he, he looked like up. he just got out of bed. He 100 percent slept in the other room. There's no way he looked like that and then came over like it was just woke up getting coffee. You know, now that you're saying that, I, I'm telling you, as each like, moment, how can you, how as can you be in the same minute room? passes of each day that goes by, I feel more and more rage. Yeah. Now I'm so, I, now I'm even more angry because I'm thinking about the fact that Ariana and uh, Sando are still living together, obviously, because, you know, financially they, the they bought this house, whatever. I'm like, Sando, get the fuck out of there. That's what I'm Go saying. Go away. Leave Ariana in your home. Let her have her peace for the love of God. Le- at least give Ariana the space and let her be in the house with the dogs. Why do you even want to be there? Ariana said that they have like a go between who's texting them so that the other person knows like when the person's home. What? Sando, get the fuck out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. You know, crash on someone's couch. Use whatever. I, I guess they, they all the money's tied up in Schwartz and Sandy's. But like, sleep on, sleep at the restaurant. I mean, go, for real, whatever, like, dude, give get Ariana her space. So selfish. I mean, so if it selfish. wasn't already the most selfish thing of all time, like to double down and be like, sorry, um, I'm gonna be watching my favorite sh- TV show oh, tonight, so like, you can't God. come in the room. Like, he's one step away from having Raquel over for dinner. I mean, like, he's it's literally. I mean, straight up. How how insane was that opening line though? When when he goes he goes down and he's like making coffee. He's like, "How you doing?" She goes, "Wishing you were dead or something." I was just like, like <laughs> <laughs> the opening line. He was hoping for like a, um, I mean, I'm surviving. That's what he was hoping for. But she came out with the katana. Dude, Ariana in this episode was. Everything she said, I was writing it down furiously because as devastating as this episode was, it was just like the picture of this woman who had these horrible things done to her by her partner and one of her best friends, but just spoke so much truth to him and was just like, get out of here. My favorite line of the morning with her was when he is making excuses and he goes like, you know... You, the past couple months, you haven't even been there for me, and we haven't even barely been talking. And she goes, "You're already fucking my best friend." And he's like, "I mean, true, but I'm <laughs> still like, saying you didn't know that, so you should have still been nicer to me." Like it was just like the fact that this was being filmed. This is there are cameras in your face. 
This news just dropped. Your partner of almost 10 years just found all of this out. And you'd think that this guy would be like, oh, fuck, I need to be in like, you know, on my hands and knees, sobbing, begging for forgiveness. I know what I did was wrong. I know you don't want me anymore, but what I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This asshole had the audacity to try to spin this narrative the entire time and be like, well, you, Ariana, have to always be right. He literally is yelling at her going, she knows everything, everybody. She knows everything. My jaw was on the floor. He tried to create a narrative. And Ariana, actually, I believe it was with the New Yorker, the New York Times, where she was interviewed and said when she watched back the finale, she realized, she goes, this guy was trying to create his own Mm storyline. This is exactly what he's doing. He made the active choice to be like, I'm going to try to spin this as a, I know I made this quote unquote mistake, but I'm going to attempt to make it look like I tried to break up with if Ariana. If it wasn't for her, we would have made it. Exactly. Kind like, of thing. put it on her. Like, right. did everybody feel kind of bad for me? Yeah, I made a mistake, but like, look at all this stuff. I'm kind of the victim here. Exactly. It's kind of what he's going for. And exactly. And she yeah. said that in the article, she said, I when I watched that back, I actually was really happy. She said, because what he could have done is been super apologetic. She goes, which I know wasn't re- wouldn't but have been real. Could have won some sympathy points. Could have won some or at least like points shaved off some of the hate. But she said, well, I was so happy he did that because that's really who he is. And so the world got to see the true version of what we deal with in our conversation. Something that's very interesting to me about him and watching this whole arc is I remember when I was in my late teens, early 20s, and we had just started dating. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, when you're young, too, you have a lot of like, um, you know, you don't have like. Ten, you don't you don't know what it's like to be in a relationship. You don't know tendencies, good tendencies, bad tendencies. And early on, late teens, I remember feeling a little bit of like these moments of like, oh, I don't want to tell Jess this thing happened because it'll hurt her feelings, right? So you kind of put yourself. Yeah, but not cheating. Stuff. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is like you put yourself in this place that I am the beholder. And I am the arbiter of their feeling. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's something small. Like there was this random girl who flirted with me. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and my friends saw it. Right. And if Jess goes, did that girl flirt with you? You can kind of go in your head. Well, it's kind of a harmless lie that if I just say, no, she didn't, no one's hurt. And then I don't have to deal with her. You know, you basically what it comes down to is you rationalize it in your head. Like, well, I don't want to hurt her feelings, but what really is going on is that I don't want to deal with her freaking out at me. That's your mindset. Right. But these are things you learn when you're in your young twenties and you realize later, Oh, okay. It's better to be honest because then you're trusting them with the truth and allowing them to react. Autonomy. Exactly. You're not being the, the decider of how someone feels. You're just giving them truth and they have to deal with it as they, as it comes. What's so interesting is to see a man like in his forties or whatever, take that to the farthest level, never having learned, um, never having learned to be not selfish in everything. Mm -hmm. And you see what happens when you spend 25 more years building on top of this horrible behavior to where he's developed this narcissist, like, mentality that says everything i kind of do is for everyone else when in reality everything you do is for yourself but you've convinced yourself that you're the victim here Mm -hmm. so it's like the cheating well it's because she was not very intimate and cool with me so that's her fault and you know that's why i did it i didn't want to do it but you know you kind of forced me almost and then i didn't tell you because um you would have freaked out and like you know what i mean so it's like mm-hmm. it's interesting to watch him say it and to us we're watching it and we're going this is insanity mm-hmm. but to his mind you can see in his mind that he's like don't you understand what i'm going through here mm-hmm. and to be in ariana's position and to not jump across the <laughs> table and try to choke him <laughs> I mean, is incredible. The fact that she just stayed there and was listening and then like would lash out a little bit, but then be back and then listening to him defend himself. And then it's one thing to also defend your behavior. 
It's then another to in front of her when she goes, just so you know, the person you're with is like a backstabbing friend. He goes, don't deny our connection. Oh, he then starts defending God. their connection. He goes, no, it's not bullshit. It's strong and real. And it's something I never had with. It's like, I don't think she needs to hear right now how strong your connection is. I think you just need to shut the fuck up. And Correct. I think that is so interesting. Watching all this is watching him flip flop between like false grief. But then when that grief is not met with, it's okay. I love you. Him snapping back into defending his actions, mm -hmm. which is like your true self. Of course. And that's the thing too. Like, I mean, the, the crying on this episode from Dude, him. It was like, Oh, when are you trying out for Broadway? Cause you'd be great. I mean, it was to me, it looked so fake. I couldn't even the random bursts. That's, that's what made it fake is it wasn't a build. It was just immediate crying. And it was like, Oh geez. And, and, and then even if there were moments of genuine crying, you could just see that it was like, I'm crying for myself right now because this situation is really hard for me. Yes. Like I'm stressed now and like when people he was are at mad Lisa's at me. And he has that kind of panic attack that had nothing to do with Ariana. No, that had everything to do with the fact of shit. Maybe I don't have this under control. And, Correct. and I am losing my friends Correct. and I am looking bad and maybe people won't show up to my shows now. Like you could see those things flashing in his mind, right. not like Ariana's devastated. And I heard uh, Andy Cohen talking, I believe it was on Chicks in the Office where they interviewed him. It was a great episode. They interviewed him and he said that he's like, I don't know, like when I saw and I interviewed Sandoval, like he looked unwell and was like shaky and crying and all this but then on watch what happens live right after the finale ariana was like oh no he loves this attention and i believe she made a comment about like he's still touring isn't he like right you know and i love Le i love Sa i love andy and i love lisa but you always got to realize that they're always going to play both sides because it's their show so right. they can't pick sides up all the way they yeah. kind of have to go well let's keep the narrative going a little Even like they're, they're master see, creators andy, andy will i'm sure andy, andy goes hard but i'm more just saying extent. like yeah they'll always be a little bit like i'm an open door to everyone here because right. it's their show they got to be the wizard of oz a little bit mm -hmm. um but no i i think in him he goes it's kind of like all press is good press a little bit yeah. you know what i mean yeah and it, now it probably went out of control and he's realizing it went too far but before it all blew up, he probably thought like worst case scenario, even if I get hate, at least I'm getting some clicks. Well, a lot of the cast has been saying things like, listen, we have this situation where, yes, there's been uh, partners who have cheated on each other in previous seasons and, you know, came out of it eventually. And they believe that Sandoval uh, was uh, and Raquel were attempting to do this whole um, I believe Charlie used the phrase, you know, Brad Pitt and Angelina type situation. They thought they were going to emerge and eventually kind of be like, look at us and had a game plan for how they were going to do it and then would come out and people would like eventually fall in love with them. I think they had their whole story ready and crafted. I think Sando thought that there was going to be a narrative that he could spin. You can see the way that he's addressing Ariana. He's trying to paint a picture when he went on Howie Mandel's podcast he was trying to make himself the victim and paint this gross uh, false narrative about yeah. ariana and then how his feelings with raquel and even when sandoval sat down with lisa he told lisa my plan was to for sure tell ariana before the reunion about Raquel because Raquel and I couldn't bear to see Ariana defending Raquel yeah. during the reunion when, you know, you'd have like Lala and Katie like coming for Raquel. And it's like, do you think in any world that Sando and Raquel were planning on telling Ariana right before the reunion about the affair of course not. that would then be explosive on the, uh, on the reunion. That's the only thing that they talk about. Please. No, the amount of times that Sandoval looked at someone or looked into the camera on an ITM and lied during this episode was mind blowing and that you could now document. For example, he made some comment that that him and Raquel had a moment where it all kind of started uh, at guys night. And he said, we just kissed. Well, it's come out now since that again, they had sex 
in her, in her car, car yeah. outside of his and Ariana's driveway. Ariana was home. And then she had to let him in. And she had to let him Which in. But insane. there are these moments where he's blatantly going, no, it was just this. And you see him lying. Yeah. And then even Kristen, Dodie, his ex, who then came over to see Ariana, you see a flashback when they were together. And then him and Ariana started dating where she was like, enjoy be- dating the best liar I've ever met in my life. And it's interesting because this thing about Sando and his like, dude, bro, like and just the hair and just kind of the attitude. I was always like, man, this guy seems like he's a bad liar. He seems like he's just just would be a mess with that. But watching him talking to certain people in ITMs and flashbacks and in this episode, you go, oh, no, this guy has it down to an art, the amount that he lies. 100%. Um, it's interesting also seeing with Schwartz, too, where it's like, you know, there's just this real, with these guys specifically, there's a real, like, we don't, we're not really concerned with who gets burned. Mm-mm. We're much more interested in making sure we're comfortable. Oh, yeah. Like, it's even just a, it's not even like a success thing. Like, it's a comfort thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, we just want to be famous and just be chill, man. Like, oh, I just want to have beers and <laughs> chill. And like, your whole like affair is bumming me out. Like for Schwartz, you know what I mean? Like, Dude. you're stressing <laughs> me out about some stuff. You're, it's just a bummer. I don't like stress. This is a very big bummer. Mm-hmm. And then for Sandoval, it's like, Ariana, you're a bummer to me. Like, you're not fun. It's kind of a bummer. So it's like, I'm just willing to like burn the world down so that I don't have to deal with bummers, Mm -hmm. which is kind of like being 15. Correct. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to go to like school. (laughs) It's a bummer. It's like weird. It's like 15 year olds trapped in 40 year olds bodies. I know. Listening to them talk is like, oh, where's the like your 40 thing zero emotional maturity yeah where's like yeah. your whole 40 and like you care about people and that you're like interested in because like even schwartz's whole thing is like i care about people in that i want them to like me correct yeah yeah but not <laughs> i actually genuinely care about them and i'm gonna be there for them because when things count they're never there for them oh schwartzy during this episode though i was enraged i was also laughing I, I i couldn't stop laughing because When he, when Katie came over and was like, listen, I know, again, another guy just blatantly lying over and over again. When Katie's like, I know you've known for a long time. And he goes, no, man, it's been like, it's It's only been been a month. A month or something. It's been like a month. She's like, no, in October, you made that comment. He goes, I did not say that. And then like two more pushes. And he's like, fine. I knew about the one thing. Okay, fine. I found out about it about six months ago. And she's just like, dude. And then when she's like, why didn't you step up and do the right thing and tell him that he needs to end it or talk to Ariana? And he's like, God, Katie, I'm just a guy. (laughs) He literally goes, Katie, I don't know. Like, there's just been so much. I'm just a guy trying to get by. Trying to get through life. Trying to get through life worried about my 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 health my wealth my family and now they're like fucking man-eating crocodiles in florida like it's too much I'm like what? <laughs> like i hate to be mean i but like sh- rewound you- and watch that over and over again when he leaned forward and goes and katie by the way is typical katie like remaining so calm and it's just like why are you allowing right. him to to put you in these situations where then you aren't stepping up and being a good guy. And he's just, Katie, I'm just a guy. (laughs) No, it was so bizarre. He switched in, but I can, that sounds like a 15 year old. Like, you know, when parents laugh at their kids Uh and a 13 year old, a 13 year old says to their parents like, Oh, hell of a week. And then everyone laughs laughs like, Oh, please. Like that's how he acts. I'm just a guy trying to get through life worried about my health wealth and my family and now there's man eating crocodiles I, I i it's so insane to actually think that like they were together i know can you believe that, like they had a relationship you know so it's almost, it's almost like she just wanted a golden retriever so she got him but like she could have just gotten a golden retriever it was like one of the two it's like should i get a rescue they're so cute Schwartz is kind of a rescue. I, I don't even know. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I mean, Schwartz, he's just like, whole- man, you know what I mean? But like, 
Yeah, I, uh, it's 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 fascinating to watch. And then and then you saw another one of the fake cries with Sando, which was creepy because he walks into Schwartz's place. <laughs> and Schwartz goes, goes, "There is the most reviled man goes, in America." There he is. <laughs> And and it was interesting too because you then see a little bit of lack of empathy amongst each other because you saw two lack of empathy moments happen between the, them. The first one was when Sando walks in and he goes, "Hey man, there's the most reviled man in America," and then and then Sando just goes, "Yeah," but, and he starts crying like shaking, and then two seconds later he's fine again. Mm-hmm. And then he just goes, "It's okay, man." He's giving like a pat, like I fucking hate you, but whatever, dude. And then. Schwartz then goes on this whole thing about how I'm getting canceled. Can you put out like a press statement that says like, I wasn't a part of this. Like I'm trying to save my ass here. And then Sando goes, yeah, man, totally. Um, We'll just stay off the internet. Uh, I'll see you later. He goes, stay off the internet and just walk. And you kind of see like, Oh shit. Uh They always have each other's backs, but like maybe this will start to crack them because it's like, they're both not even showing empathy toward each other. Now Mm -hmm. they had each other's backs in this moment. And they both got burned. I don't know. It's yeah. like just pure selfishness at the highest level. But it's also like you're seeing that it's consistent. Like, mm-hmm. oh, it's not like you were bros for life and you got each other's backs. And now it's it's like, no, even in the, the heat, you clearly aren't showing empathy toward each other. No. And but even the, also then too that conversation where where Schwartzy's like, can you put out a press statement and tell everyone I wasn't involved? I'm like, why are you saying this on camera? Like all these things where but I'm like, she doesn't Dude, get that. It's it blows my mind. It's not tracking with the like, in- like, incrimination factor like, of this. Why aren't you sending this in a text to Sandoval? Like I get on camera, you then wanting to say a face where you're like, bro, I told you from the get that you should have talked to Ariana about it, and it wasn't cool, man. And I, you know that I, I I'm gonna have your back because I love you, but like, you know, you should have done that whatever that's on camera but then like can you please put out something on instagram because we all saw then what Sa- what sandoval posted on instagram which isn't a weird perspective then to watch that you're like oh he put that out because schwartzy was like you got to put something out yeah and then it all just feels so disingenuous like 100 you know what i mean you know what i mean well even when they hugged he goes dude we had a game plan i know <laughs> and you didn't stick with the game plan Real quick side note. Hey, if you're going to um, just recommending, I would imagine I, I'm not the best liar in the world, but <laughs> these people are so bad liar. where it's like, hey, I am a bad liar, huh? Yeah, it's very obvious. Um, Sando, next time you save erotic FaceTimes in your camera roll, maybe just change your password or something. But like leaving your password the same that your girl knows and then having the video in the camera roll but think about is this. one of the most wild moves you could ever have. Co- correct. Also, though, the fact that he said within the first two goddamn minutes of this episode, that's normally something I would delete, but it was such a hectic week. I forgot about it. That is a person. <laughs> like, I'm so busy. What do you like? You mean like you're running an empire? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, first about? of all, you're like, with the show. It's been so busy. You're I like, forgot I, to I forgot to charge out. my lightning bolt vest, you know, before the show. God. I got to plug it in. It's just been a lot. I had lost a couple. I had a lot of partying that I had to do. I crystals on my pants that I, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, pinning. Yeah, it just took forever. No, no. Think about that, though. That statement. This is something I would normally delete, but I got busy. That's like saying, I usually respond to emails, but like I was just a little late on the email because it's like I do this all the time. Exactly. So all that that statement was, was this is happening so consistently. I would, of course, normally delete them. Yes. But I forgot this time because I was so busy. And that's all you needed to know. Someone who says that so nonchalantly, someone who is going to have this like affair with a best friend for seven months be out in public like at the abbey where people can see you yeah. this is the type of person who has cheated so regularly starting to get like so like, starting, getting first of all getting so, lazy yeah but then getting second of lazy. all getting just so used to it that you just think you'll never get caught it's so cocky yeah that you think like it's never gonna happen i'm never gonna get caught and you see that in his reaction too just the way that then again at the top of the episode he comes down and is just like well ariana if it wasn't for the fact that you did this and you were this way and you're like bro this is someone who has cheated so much and is so hardened cocky that it's like when you've done it so much 
you no longer realize just how wrong and terrible it is almost. Yes. You've just become so hardened well, to Well, when it. you're angry at the person you've wronged too, mm-hmm. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that you feel wronged. Mm. So it's like, you're def- you know what I mean? Like if you're truly remorseful, you're just going to realize how you messed up and you're going to be just devastated. But if you feel justified in your actions, you're going to fight for your actions. Of course. But the, with, regarding the real quick side note regarding the cheating thing, mm-hmm. what was interesting is now that we're t- saying that like, He got lazy and he got complacent and he got used to cheating and getting away with it. I think there was like when he's talking to Sheena about the cheating and she goes, was there anyone else? He goes, no. Well, there actually was one more person. And she goes, was it someone we know? And he goes, yeah, but I'm not going to get into it. I think what happened there was he goes, no, there's no more cheating. I'm lying about all the others. Mm -hmm. Oh shit though. You'll probably find out about one more. Ah, yep. Because I'll say no, Maybe not at all. Maybe we have a mutual all. friend and because it'll come out. I bet Ariana knows or Ariana knows about the third person, but they never talked about it. They buried it, whatever, whatever. It'll get brought up at the reunion. And, or Sheena yeah. and Ariana will be hanging out. Sure, and, she, yeah. and Ariana yeah. will go, hey, by the way, yeah, they cheated with whoever. And then she'll go, he said he never cheated again. And then it opens up the 20 other people that possibly he cheated with. Mm-hmm. So he goes, I got to get this one out. Because remember, he's a good liar. It's like, he's got to... I got to I got to let her know this one cuz this one can be confirmed. The other 5 or whatever that maybe are out there, she, Ariana doesn't know so we might be able to keep that buried. Mm, you you do the little leak to make it you seem do, like you, you're being honest. You give a little but not all. That's a dark technique. So man. I bet he ha, you know, he confirmed. I guess this will be his third affair in their relationship which is wild to think wild. about. And I bet there's many more. I'm sure. I mean, like they always said, oh he stayed out late, you never knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. You think he cheated Three times in eight years. And let's also be clear to the place that here, he goes, he wants to be seen. Yes. He wants to go places where he knows he's going to get adored, where he's getting seen, where fans are going to want photos yep. with him. Like, you don't think that there were a lot of situations where, please, 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 please. Ridiculous. Dude, please. Man, I'm <laughs> justified, man. She never like even talked to me or even said I was awesome. Raquel, honestly, man. She is awesome because she takes shots and like Ariana like rarely takes shots. It's like shots all day, man. I'm 40 years old and I kind of woke up one day and I realized like I need to be taking more shots. Dude, that That's that guy. It's like, bro, shots? Even when him and Raquel hung out for a second, they were like shots again. I was like, okay, wait, wait, I want to talk okay, about that. Right. I need, we need to talk about their meeting. Yes. Okay. We absolutely. Okay. Do. But quick pause, quick pause. Okay, so my hair has been growing, which if you've been around for a minute, you know that that was kind of a tough journey for me in my hair. I couldn't find a product that worked for me, to be honest. I had almost just given up, and then I started using Vegamore, and it changed my hair, okay? My hair is now growing. It's visibly thicker and fuller and shinier. I could not believe it. I love Vegamore. I will use Vegamore for forever. It looks great, babe. Seriously. Thank you. <laughs> yes, and again with Vegamore, you can get visibly thicker, fuller, shinier, longer hair without all the harsh ingredients. All Vegamore products are 100% cruelty-free and never formulated with potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. And, oh my gosh, Vegamore has these value kits like the Grow Essentials kit where you get to try more than one amazing product at a great savings. When you sign up for a monthly subscription, you save more and you never run low on the products you need to take care of your hair the key is consistency in your routine for your most beautiful healthy looking hair and i use vegamore's shampoo and conditioner every time i wash my hair it's so simple and i also use their grow hair serum daily and my hair and my scalp are flourishing fun fact vegamore sells one bottle of that grow serum every 15 seconds on their website that's how good this stuff is okay that's insane yeah <laughs> give yourself the hair you never thought you could have with vegamore for a limited time your mom and dad listeners get 20 percent off their first order by going to vegamore.com slash mom dad and use code mom dad at checkout that's v-e-g-a-m-o-u-r dot com slash mom dad use code mom dad to save 20 percent off your first order v-e-g-a-m-o-u-r dot com slash mom dad code mom dad love you vegamore love you so today's show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Listen, we all know how important it is to take care of you. And for forever, we've been having these conversations about getting those nutrients your body needs, moving your body. But we also have to talk about taking care of 
of the emotional health. Therapy is an amazing way to do that. For example, therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. You know how we feel about therapy and how much it has benefited us both. BetterHelp is entirely online. It's de- it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out the brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Honestly, for both of us, talk therapy is an essential part of our health. It's improved our lives separately, together. It's facilitated so much growth and healing. I know for myself, it's helped me so much with learning how to set boundaries and learn positive coping skills. I could go on. Basically, I highly suggest it, okay? Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash momdad today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash mom dad okay so the tom and raquel meeting in her apartment first of all i want to say this how dare how dare she because those lights are forever ruined for me i have to tell you yeah i kind of wanted to get them for ember i also i love the galaxy lights i think those things are magical i know they were being all the girls were being super i mean to be honest rude about the light situation (laughs) that raquel had but i like those lights i find them to be comforting and now they're ruined yeah. Anytime I see those lights, if we get those lights for Ember, I'm going to walk in her room every day and be like, Markel, oh my God, I can't do it now. Yeah. Also, too, Core's light ruined. They've oh, ruined Core's yeah. light because Schwartzy asked for a Coke from Katie's fridge, pours a Core's light, light, and then Tom and Raquel do a shot at who knows what time of the day and then chug a Core's light. And I know Core's light is watching, going, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, no, we're good, we're good, <laughs> no, we're good. No, you guys, stop. G- give Ariana, have Ariana drink yeah, yeah, yeah. Coors Light. Ariana <laughs> is sponsored those, by Coors Light now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. those three. <laughs> They're like, please, God, no, not them. So that's both ruined for me. Oh, my gosh. Okay, um, yeah, let's talk about the, let's talk about their meeting. So, <sighs> this whole thing was quite mind-blowing to me because we also previously had a moment where james was with some of the women and called raquel (laughs) i love how petty james is he is the pettiest he's so petty person but he was also really hurt and we saw that no 100 percent. but like just even him thinking about like let me call her like and then put her on speaker on the um and then make this like and ali's like james don't yeah (laughs) i'm going to the kitchen (laughs) ali is always the like you know the logical just kind of hey james we don't need to do like, this james, and he's so argumentative and petty he's like i need to get my pound of flash <laughs> at all costs. but he said something in that conversation with raquel it was a brief conversation but he did make a comment and he said what does it feel like to now um have all the friends you made want nothing to do with you and she didn't say i'm devastated i feel horrible i don't blame people she said it's been very telling. Interesting statement. Interesting statement. I think, I mean, we'll talk more about this, but I think it adds to what I really feel about her, mm-hmm. which is Raquel seems to be kind of weirdly not connecting with the devastation. She's mm-hmm. just kind of sitting there, like just going, oh, it's interesting how they're sad about all this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, You can see it. She's not like connecting with like her hurting people almost. Mm -hmm. She's almost like just this is uncomfortable. And I don't like the fact that I'm having to deal with this right now. Well, even how Sheena said when Sheena confronted her. She's not crying. She's not panicky at all. She's just kind of like sitting in this. And she even says to to, to Sandoval, because Sandoval said like, we fucked up and we should have never done that. Like to some extent, there's like a little bit of like, yeah, bur- uh, burn in hell where we should be. There's a little bit of realization of like, oh, we really shit the pot here. Or like, at least faking it for TV. Sure, sure. But, there's, a, but there's at least a like realizing that strategically we didn't pull this off and there's a lot of people hurt and fuck, I'm getting a lot of flack for this and it's stressful, mm-hmm. right? She's going like, she goes, I mean, we're just two people that met and connected. Like she's not catching the whole like, oh, and I ripped a a, a a 10 year relationship to shreds and destroyed friendships and marriages and everything. Like I just 
I don't really understand why people can't get that, like, just two people connect sometimes. Like, what's so hard for she everyone? She said shoulda, woulda, coulda, made, done it differently, but like, oh well. Like, what do you want me to You're do? Like, dude, just show a little bit of grief. Again, this has been 48 hours post everything, right. and this was, uh, this was a woman who you spent so much time with who was one of your best friends, and... It's mind blowing. And I saw an interesting thing that showed a picture of um, Raquel talking about her pageant days. Oh, yeah. And how she was like, that was hard for her. She was sobbing. And so she's crying Mm -hmm. and acting remorseful and sad about her pageant days and how it was traumatic for her. But when she's in her ITMs talking about how she destroyed friendships and betrayed at the highest level, she's smiling. And kind of laughing. Yeah, saying it was the best sex. It's kind of, it's like, I think that's what would be the worst thing for me if I was Ariana, is not only having it happen to me, but then to see how she's acting about it. Mm-hmm. The like, you never meant anything to me. Like, she never once mentioned, I'm going to miss Ariana. I'm devastated by the fact that my friends aren't here anymore. She's not even connecting Mm-mm. with the human side of this. Mm-mm. It's it's very interesting. No, there was no mention of the whole conversation between the two of them was very much like, uh oh, we got caught, but like we really we really were just two innocent friends and oh well, oopsie, here this happened. There, like you said, there wasn't a mention of, oh my God, does Ariana hate me? How is Ariana? Like anything like that. I would say it was to the emotional level of like I'm sorry I couldn't make your birthday. Mm-hmm. Like I just got a little busy and you know, I don't, you're really mad at me for not making your birthday, but it's like at the end of the day, we're all, we're working. I'm busy. You know, my, it was my mom's birthday. And it was hard for me to get there in time. Like it was, it was kind of that. Mm-hmm. Like if, if, if I was like, I'm really sad that you couldn't make it to my birthday and you're like, I'm really sorry. And then later on you're telling your friend, like, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm busy. I couldn't make yeah, it. To the it's birthday. also like you have two people who know, what Ariana has been going through aside from what they're sneakily doing behind her back, like right. the loss of her pet, the loss of her grandma, who she was so close with, like all of the stuff that she's dealing with, like the stress of starting a, a sandwich shop, like all these things that yeah. she's processing. And there's just nothing like Sandoval. You could just say is the top pro at selfishness Mm -hmm. to where you're like, Oh, he felt when her dog died, which is the same week that they hooked up for the first time that this is a bummer for me. And I'm, and it's just, it's a lot of drama. And I just, I just want to be doted on and loved and I want to have sex and I want to have fun. And I just don't really, I just am like, you're all your issues are just too much for me. And I just want to take care of myself. And I'm also too selfish and too much of a coward to then just break up with you. A hundred percent. Right. It's just, but it's just pure selfishness Mm -hmm. with, with Raquel. I feel like she also is the, as pro as he is at the selfishness, but then there's another layer, which is like, but I'm not even connecting with that. It's selfish. Like I'm not Mm -hmm. even connecting with the fact that like, this is hurtful for you. Why are you even hurt? Like it, it's weirdly like, cause there's just no emotion. I think that's freaking me out. Mm-hmm. The lack of emotion to fuck your best friend's 10 year relationship and just not even shed a tear is like, I think it was then too like the combination, like you said, of then seeing her sobbing with the pageant. So we know yes, that that's a possibility. You, we know she's capable of tears. And the only emotion that we were seeing in Tom and Raquel's meeting in her apartment was her smiling when he would say certain things that would get her to smile or her smiling in the ITMs. If she would have shown anger, it would have been better. Oh, hundred percent. Cause at least there's like, you're connecting with something. Mm-hmm. So you're maybe you're, maybe you're doing the thing he's doing, which is like, I'm angrily defending myself because I'm showing emotion, but like, but to be calm and just be like, what do you want me to do? That is what freaked me out. Mm -hmm. Well, there were so many layers of those things going on, too. When they, I'm sorry, but like when they saw each other, did a shot and then chugged a beer, I just kept thinking about how there's been numerous conversations about how 
you know, Sando just wants to go party and have fun. And they kept talking about how Raquel is his party pal. And like they go out and they drink together. The day that this finale dropped, there was rumors online and like, quote unquote, announcements that they had ended their relationship sure, or whatever sure. they have going on. But then Ariana went on Watch What Happens Live and was like, I do not think that that is true at all. Um, Raquel has, you know, had her phone turned off. I don't know if she's still in rehab or whatnot, but she said, we're still getting weekly letters from Raquel to Sandoval. And I'm seeing them because they're arriving to our house. Ariana said, as far as she knows, they're not over. But from my perspective, seeing the dynamic of the relationship, the quote unquote relationship, seeing the dynamic of the affair, the throwing back the shots, the partying, that's where they exist. My perspective is if they are together, if they do stay together, this thing's going to end soon because it is just a party relationship. Re again, relationship. I want to keep putting quotations around that. And also, I think 1000% Sandoval is doing that midlife crisis bullshit where he's just like, I want to feel alive, man. And that's it's all his this version is. Of a Harley. I think the second that this isn't as forbidden anymore because him and Ariana live in separate houses and now everyone knows that like him and Raquel are dating, he's done. It's just the excitement yeah. that well, he's this latched on to. This is sadistic of me, mm -hmm. but I want them to stay together so that we can see one of them cheat on each other. Yeah, I understand. You know what that. I mean? Like, I want that. I want them to stay together. I want this show to be happening. I want all the friends to be against them and have the two storylines going. And what I want is for one of them to have a blowout cheat scandal that blows them out. Well, because <laughs> then it's like, all right, a little bit of like karmic justice. You right. know what I mean? Well, like, well, like, I don't want them to just like get off scot free with just a, yeah, we're just not seeing each other anymore. I want it to go down in flames. Well, like all the cast has said, like, God, we hope that they're together because you after make all it of this, it. you better make it work. Get to date for like six more months and then break up after you've blown your whole no. life to shreds. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what will happen. I, I don't know. know but I will say this when they were sitting in in her apartment together, I was already getting the sense that Sando was annoyed by her. And I think he was only annoyed by her because now he's having to deal with repercussions. Yes. I don't think it was technically Raquel that was annoying him. I think he's so selfish that it was like, God, well, now when I look at you, Raquel, it's only problems and drama. It's not fun anymore, like you were saying. So now I'm already a little irritated by you. Because there were comments when he walked in. He was like, can we just turn the lights down lower? And he was just kind of like on edge with her, but not in a way that like he's just stressed, in a way that he seemed annoyed by her. And even that moment where she was asking about uh, his parents and how they think, feel about her, and he goes, yeah, they love you. And she goes, I love you too. That was brutal. And he said, no, I said, they love you, but I love you too. And he yeah. kind of did this thing. Well, and I, I saw people saying that that they weren't getting the vibe. I was hearing people saying they were getting the opposite vibe of him being annoyed with her. I felt like he was there was annoyance being read all over his body. And even when he's describing her to Ariana or other people, mm -hmm. he's never saying she's a great person and I like her a lot. It's always, she makes me feel supported. Mm -hmm. She makes me feel cool and smart. Mm -hmm. Not super hard to do. <laughs> but, um, but you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of like, I'm getting something I haven't gotten in a while. Yeah. Not, this person's great. So you could see almost kind of like, now that the, the danger is gone mm -hmm. too, it's like, do I even like you? That's what I'm saying. You know That's what I mean? the vibe like, I'm getting. Because uh, because I don't know if I even like you that much. I think it was just more about the excitement of like cheating. Right. It was like, hey, now that my whole I think Ariana down, I like and I much. are coming to a close, but I'm going to be a coward and just cheat on her and then gaslight the hell out of her and do all this shit instead yes. of just ending the relationship. Um, instead, you know, I'm going to do all this. But I think, too, there was a moment where then Raquel, towards the end of the conversation, said, should I put my life out on the line being with someone that I know cheated on Jeez. someone they love so much? Like, will you do that to me? He's and I'm like, like are he's we? Like, he's like, I'm whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, but I'm like, are we for real having this conversation? You're on camera going, I'm worried that you're going to hurt me. I'm worried about me. me. But then, you know, Sando was like, listen, listen, this was a different 
it, it was so strong between us. Like I wouldn't normally, and I'm like, roll the tapes. First of all, he cheats all the time. <laughs> Second, roll the footage. You're number and then, four. And he's like, no, it's different. And then you see him in ITMs going, listen, I don't know if Raquel and I are going to work out or not. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. But what I do know is when I hooked up with Raquel, I felt hope again and I felt like alive. It's and you're like, bro. Mentality. What's interesting. To and think- then also, again, just the this is just selfish for me. I want to have fun. I want to live this specific life. I don't want to have any to deal with any repercussions of anything. And so now I believe he's going to get over Raquel real quick. Because he's going to be like, this isn't fun anymore. This yes. is hard. Yes. I'm out. Yeah. It's it's really sad, too, because like it's not like he even did the let's keep our Ariana, let's keep our relationship more surface level, even though we've been together for a long time. Let's not buy the house. Let me not talk about wanting kids like let's keep it surface level and fun. He went double down. He goes, let's buy the house. Let's let's do all this stuff, which only fucks her over. Yeah. Because she's invested. And he had the audacity to go on the Howie Mandel podcast first and talk about how Ariana, you know, he was attempting to break up with her, which, by the way, Ariana said on Watch What Happens Live is a lie. He wasn't attempting to break up with her, which obviously I believe Ariana, mind, body and soul. You know, that guy consider considers him trying to break up with her, him being like, I think we've been having a hard time lately. Tried. I did everything I could. I I did (laughs) everything I could. Six months ago, I told you we're struggling and it's a little hard right now. What else do you want from me? And then you got mad. So like I changed the subject. So I'm basically like I would. My only option was to cheat on you 17 times. That's my only (laughs) option. Unbelievable. But then he went on Howie Mandel and he was like, I was trying to break up with her. And then she was like focused on me, you know, um, like getting sperm and her freezing her eggs. And he tries to paint this narrative which is despicable because then we see Ariana having a conversation later with Schwartzy where it was like, I was trying to get him sober for five days so that we could do this. So if he wanted it down the road, because he had talked about that and she was more on the fence, but it was something that he had wanted potentially a family that she was like, I'm willing to do this. Mm. He wanted it. And now he's trying to paint this picture of this narrative to try to make her into this villain, try to make her into this person who like wouldn't hear him or listen or blah, 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 blah. When it's like, like Ariana said at the beginning of the episode, I would have followed you anywhere. That's why I don't think when he said to Sheena that the buying of the house was a band aid, this, then the other, I don't think it was a band aid. I think it was getting her off his scent. Oh, like he's cheating all the time. And so if I say, let's buy a house together, you're going to kind of stop thinking about like, because she probably was smelling things. She was probably yeah, going, wait course. a second. What was that text that you were taking at 3 a.m.? Why did you keep going to the bathroom to take text messages? Why are you walking outside to take phone calls every time? Babe, let's buy a house together. Oh, oh, oh he, he's probably fine. We should have kids together. Oh, oh, he's probably fine. Like he's that kind of guy. That's what those mm-hmm. kind of guys do is they like, they, they double down on you to make mm-hmm. you think that like you're in, but reality is that's a sign of like, they're doing more shit on the side. Certain people yeah, are like that, you know? I think he's that kind of guy. Yeah, that would make sense. I don't Oof. think it's a band-aid. I don't think it's a band-aid. It's like, no. You're not going to go... You're not going to spend your life savings and like go throw that work to buy a house for a band-aid. Mm-hmm. You're putting band-aids on because you're panicking and you're feeling like oh, you're going to get caught any second. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, his and Sheena's conversation was another electric because Sheena was like, no. Sheena this was like, Sheena the whole time. I know. Her <laughs> eyes were like this the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> No, that was she came in with the the hammer Mm -hmm. and the second that that Sando was trying to do the whole, well, you know, I knew it it, it wasn't going to work out and I tried to break up with her. And she goes, oh, so instead you fucked her best friend. And I just because like that same thing happened with uh, the same thing happened with Ariana. He's like, you don't even like you. I tried to talk to you. And you're like, so you fucked my best friend. Each time he's like. God, they abusing. <laughs> He's like, damn, they won't really, not they won't get off that, man. That move every time. <laughs> it's a chess move I was not expecting. It's like, bro, when are you gonna learn? You're on like, you're on like visit six, and you keep also, getting the same let's thing. Let's remember, this happened forty eight hours ago. This discovery, like, un. 
real. Yeah. And so, but obviously he's been narrating himself for seven months. Mm -hmm. I deserve this. You know, so where by the time it comes out, you're so deep in like your justification, in your own bullshit. Yeah. 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 Well, no, Sheena, I loved cause Sheena was just like, nope, nope, nope. And then when, you know, uh, Sandoval brought up to, to Sheena that he was like, yeah, well, I, I tried, I tried to break up with her. Sheena just comes in and she's like, there are no excuses, Sandoval. You're talking about all this shit. You call her friends. Right. You bring in the crew. You make sure that we're by her side so that we can pick up the pieces that you left behind. There are no excuses you can make. Listen, end of the day, if a relationship isn't working out, that's perfectly okay. Relationships end every single day. Sometimes people go in different directions. Sometimes one person does and it doesn't work out. That is totally fine. Of course. And you continue over and over and over again to somehow try to justify all of the terrible things that you did in the affair that you had for seven months because you couldn't break up with this person. But the, but the thing that is hilarious, not hilarious in that any of the things is hilarious, but hilarious in the logic, how stupid it is, is that he says, oh, that's why I didn't break up with her. First of all, all you got to do is call, let's say like someone like Sheena and say, hey, I'm looking to break up with her. I'm really struggling here. She has said some things that are concerning. Can we talk through maybe a best way to approach this? Right. Boom. Done. Now you're at least like in a process. Right. Um, or you call a therapist or whatever. I mean, whatever, whatever. There's so many things. Right. So you could, you could to get some help with this process. What he did was the equivalent of saying, I didn't want my arm to bleed. So I cut it off. Right. Right. Yeah. Like your solution to that dilemma mm -hmm. was to cheat on her and blow your whole life to shreds which is 10 times more traumatic than just saying to someone like hey we need to figure this out of course so it's which just is like why, which is why i don't believe it for two of course, seconds that's why it's all bullshit that's why it's, it's all it's, bullshit because you weren't gonna break up with ariana you wanted to to stay with ariana you know what i mean she or was, even if you did want to break up with her your justification for the cheating is not for the reasons you said but it, i don't it, i think logically it, it doesn't but I think it would have been years before he broke up with Ariana. Sure. He just wanted to have fun and do what he wanted to do. But it's like, and then I he's like, let me try to figure out a way to justify yeah. uh, my cheating. I didn't want to get an F on the test. So I quit school. It's like, what? Like, you, it doesn't even make sense. No, like it doesn't make any what you sense. did was so much more catastrophic than the fear of the F. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? What, it's like you're cutting the arm off because you're afraid you're going to get a cut on your arm. It's mm -hmm. like, what? So Sheena ends, she ends their relationship. She goes, I love you. I'm going to miss you, but I cannot be, Fire. I cannot, which I love that shit. Fire. That's the thing. I know that there is these types of situations because a lot of people experience going through like cheating and then having friends. We also haven't seen this. Everyone else, there's always kind of a, I'm still friends with you while you're hooking up with this person, while you're, while you betrayed that person, while you were fighting, I'm still friends and everyone's beefing. It's the first time I feel like we've seen just like, you're out of my life. I love like seeing the boundaries where it's like, Sheena's like, I can't do this because you've betrayed all of us and specifically Ariana, who I love. And even though I've known you longer at the end of the day, you are so like lost in your own sauce and making excuses for this. And this is such bullshit. Like I can't be friends with you anymore. Like we're done. And then in the same tone, Ariana Schwartz, he comes to the girls night yes. <laughs> and shows up. Hey guys. Dude, hey when he walks in, guys. he talks to them the same way he talks to his dogs. I know. <laughs> he goes, Hey guys. Hey, Hey, chilly out here. Huh? Guys. He goes, this, he goes, this place is nice. <laughs> and they look at him like, what? They go, and then Ariana, like he, he literally walks in and goes, this place is really nice. <laughs> and she goes, no one wants you here. So should we finish up this conversation by ourselves? And he goes, sure. Okay. I, he goes, I used to have a bar too. And Remember? then Lala goes, yeah, we're trying to burn that place to the ground. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. Gucci goo, see you later. Like it was very like he literally thought if I raise my voice, people will trust me. They're gonna it's like, like me. You can't get mad when you have a little baby voice. And then oh, Ariana 100%. does the same thing Sheena did. That's what I'm saying. Which was a fire move just to go, hey, maybe you're wrong. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're lying. Maybe you're not. But I'll tell you one thing. You're done. Yeah. And it was like, again, this relationship goes for a long time. They were very good friends. She was a groom's person uh, in his wedding. You know, like they were close. 
But she's like, she looks at him. She goes, I don't want to hear about how Sando's having a hard time. She goes, if I hear for one second how he, you're trying to support him because he's having a hard time, I'm walking out. So what he does instead is he lets her know what a hard time he's, he's having. having. We had a screenshot when uh, she was talking, when Ariane was talking to Lisa that they put up on the screen for a second and I took a took a photo of it. And it was a message, her first message from Schwartzy that she didn't get until like three days after everything came out. And he was like, hey, Ariana, um, just wanted to let you know, I did know about stuff, but I did tell Tom that he needed to talk to you because it wasn't respectful. You deserve a fabulous vacation. But honestly, like he is really feeling down. I don't want to kick him when he's down. But like the truth of the matter is this has been so hard for me. Like I'm getting so much backlash and heat online and like I'm really having a hard time and I would be like number blocked. Ariana, would you mind posting that like I wasn't a part of this? <laughs> Ariana, would you mind going on social media? I just, I, I totally understand you're going through a little bit. I just do he's feel like, like I'm kind of a victim And here. he's like, it's been really hard for me. And Ariana's like, yeah, Tom posted about you in the bar before he ever publicly addressed an apology to me. I'm aware. And here's the thing with Schwartzy. Listen, Schwartzy can have whatever he con conversation he wants to have with his BFF Tom about their bar and how they're going to lose money because of Sando's actions. But you have the gall, the gumption to come in and look at Ariana or send Ariana a text message and be like, dude, it's really hard for me, guy. It's really hard, Ariana. I'm having a really hard time. I'm facing a lot of backlash. I get it. Like, I would have respected him way too. more if he would have put him in, like, all the way had Sandoz back. In a way of, like, if you're going to be a liar, get in it. <laughs> yeah, but just you know to what do I the... mean? But to be halfway between both is, like, twice as bad. Mm -hmm. At least be, like, a loyal, like, bad person. Yeah. Like, at least just be, like, well... Ariana, I do feel like he was lacking a lot of things from you and it was really hard for him. And like, they'd be like, we're going to go down with the ship. At least have a spine about like your bad actions. Have a spine. But to then be like betraying both your friends and then like trying to well, go in the middle and be like, if anyone can just be concerned for me in this process, I mean, it's like it makes you so much worse. Even if he would have been like, listen, I don't want to be in business with Tom anymore, but my money stuck. And he told Tom, I think what you're doing was terrible. I can't believe that I hid this for so long. This is horrific. But here we are. We're stuck in this situation situation we have to make this work and then goes to ariana and is like i get if you if you don't want to talk to me ever again because i'm going to keep being in business with him but what i think is terrible i'm so sorry i hid this from you i i i, I can't believe da -da -da -da. Um, there's nothing i can do right now i'm stuck but and like whatever. if you want to like never speak to me again i totally get it but the whole like you guys ariana it's hard for me though was like oh, yeah. and then, are remember katie you said to him, joking katie goes you know you're gonna lose all your friends over this and he goes i don't think so <laughs> i was like they're all gone it's just a guy trying to get through life. What, 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 what can't anyone figure out of this? He's there's crocodiles health, and shit. His wealth, his health, his is wealth, family. his family. He's just a he's just a an old coal miner. <laughs> That's what he sounds. He's just an old gold miner during the rush, trying to get by with his pan, you know, by the by the riverbed and his bottle of whiskey, and he's just panning for gold. He's just trying to get the money. <laughs> To bring his family across the pasture. It's like, like what are you I talking can't. about? You live in West Hollywood and you're a liar. <laughs> you're a liar. <laughs> I just can't, like, I can't lie. Schwartzy makes me laugh so hard because it, he's just so ridiculous. Yeah. But this episode, I was like, my guy, you're going to face the heat because you are playing, you're playing the victim too. Worst case scenario for you too. You didn't cheat, but you're going to get mo uh, as almost as much backlash. So it's like, pick a side, bro. Also, realize listen, your actions and change or be evil. But it's like, also, listen, I realize that like this is your livelihood and all your money is yeah. in this. So I get the stress of that. But like, again, I give it one beat, like, just a beat. You know, this just happened 48 hours before when they're filming this. Like, let's take a pause and give Ariana a moment to support her in her grief Give it a week, maybe, and then we can have a conversation about all the bad Yelp reviews your bar is getting and how you're really, really nervous. If okay? I was in but this, like, give it a fucking. If beat. I was in this situation, here's what I would have done. I found out my business partner and best friend is fully cheating um, with a close friend of his wife's or girlfriend's. It's going to be devastating. I'm on this show. It's going to be worldwide news. It's going to be massive. I go like this: You got a week until you tell her, because here's what's going to happen: Your world's going to blow up. 
all our friends world is going to blow up, which means the show's going to blow up, which means our business is going to blow up. So here's what's going to happen. You in the quietness of your own home need to talk about this and figure this out. We need to figure out what we're going to do about this. Cause you've already put my whole life in jeopardy. I have my whole, like I wouldn't have gone, dude, come on. It's been six months. Like what's going on? Hopefully no He's one like, finds sometimes out. Sometimes he wanted to change his mind though. I would have been like, <laughs> you have one week or I say it. Yeah. Well, think about this, but add this to your scenario. You're amazing friends with that partner. Yeah, and that you're amazing friends with your partner. So it's mm-hmm. like, aside from even that, it's been like, even if I wasn't, I'd be like, you got a week. Yeah, of course. Because you're going to explode our whole life. Mm-hmm. So you have, I'm going to give you one week to do it. If you don't, I'm doing it. Because then at least I protect that person. I protect myself. You're the one that gets fucked, but this is all on you anyways. But instead, he just let his life be destroyed and then didn't have the spine to do the right thing. Yeah, and then just crazy. complains. Just and then he, just complains about he how he's a victim. His way around. He's like, oh, man, man. Just me and my banjo just down by the gold poor mine. Poor me, Ariana. Like, I get your pain, man. Like, it's really hard. I'm right there with you. Just like, give it a beat. Insane. Anywho. Wow. I mean, there were definitely moments that were left untouched, but I think that was the gist of my feelings on the I episode. feel like I just blacked out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't even know what I, I said. I have no idea what I said for the last hour. <laughs> I literally blacked out. I was so invested. (laughs) Well, everybody, the reunion airs. Part one airs tonight. So tune into that because we will be discussing that on Friday's episode. In a couple days, we'll be there right to recap it. I absolutely cannot wait. Um, Should we cleanse our palate from this nightmare, though amazing episode, but also nightmare uh, with a call home? Yes, of course. We have to do that. (laughs) Remember, you can always call. Hi, Mom and Dad. Um, my name's Carrie. I'm from Chicago. Hi, Carrie. Um, and I wanted to ask a question about moving in with a significant other. Um, so my boyfriend and I are planning on moving in together in a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never lived with a significant other before. And, like, he and I have been together for, like, over a year, which, like... I know isn't like that long, but I feel pretty confident that he's like who I want to spend the rest of my life with, Mm -hmm. which is nice. (laughs) Um, But I also am like, you know, afraid that like things are so good between us. But like, what if for some reason moving in together makes things different or like makes it harder or I don't know. Mm. People just say a lot of scary things Mm. about like moving in together and also like about like being in a relationship for a long time like oh you're gonna hate each other in five (laughs) years and stuff and i I really don't want that to happen so um if you guys have any advice on um like keeping your relationship healthy and happy while living together um and also just like i don't know any tips for like moving in together like the act of combining all your stuff um that would be great Thanks. Love you guys. Mm. Bye. Love you. Thank Love you, you, Carrie. Okay, listen. First and foremost, I have to say this. I know that a lot of people say like, oh my gosh. I feel like that's that whole kind of old school shtick thing. Mm-hmm. Like it's going to be a nightmare. You're going to hate it type mm-hmm. attitude. If you want to move in with this person, move in and do it and be excited about it. Try to do your best to ignore all of those kind of stereotypical like movie type tropes when yeah. it comes to that like this is a person like don't you said don't chew gum you'll never digest it <laughs> yeah, <that's> a- <laughs> what's the one that, like a tree will grow in your stomach if you oh, eat you it like an, a watermelon seed yeah, or an if you apple a, seed if you have an apple seed there'll be a tree <laughs> growing out of your ears it's like it really is just like that kind it's of like do your best to just go listen like you said this is the person you love this person you feel like this is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with so just do your best to just move in and feel excited about it and not think about those things that people are saying. And at the end of the day, and we were talking about doing worst case scenarios at the beginning of this episode. (laughs) So sorry, but I like the worst case scenario things to prepare myself. Worst case scenario, you guys move in together and you discover that you're not each other's people. And maybe you figure that out faster than if you wouldn't have, you know what I'm saying? And if you weren't moving in if you took longer to move in together and it took longer to find that out, then I guess that's more time than sure. You you understand what I'm saying? So hundred percent. Um, I think if you want to move in and you don't feel the pressure to move in, but you're doing it because you want to, go for it and be excited about it. Um, 
my tips would be okay again i know i always say this every single episode but it's communication 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 i know sometimes it doesn't feel sexy but i think before moving in it's good to maybe like go out to dinner have a glass of wine and like you know bring a little list of things that are important to you so that you can tell your partner, these are kind of the things I need. I know I've used, for example, before Evan and I moved in, I let Evan know, like, I need you to not talk to me for about an hour before, or like after I get home from work, I need to just kind of detox and unwind. I learned that tip from a Sex in the City episode, and that was what I realized I needed. Yeah. And so then when we moved in together, Evan knew ahead of time that like, hey, this isn't anything personal. It's not like I don't adore you, but I do need to be able to unwind after a day at work. Right. Um, and there are numerous things that you can say, like, let's just say it's super important for you to never have the dirty, dirty dishes in the sink. Maybe that makes like drives you crazy. So you can say like, Hey, this is kind of my thing. And maybe a list of a few things so that, you know, going in communicating that then the person doesn't take it personally. Like, Oh, you're annoyed living with me. It's like, no, these things are important to me regardless of if I'd be living with you or not. Right. So those are a few things. Uh, the other big thing is I would say continue to maintain independence just because you live together doesn't mean that you should spend 24 seven together. I think when you move in together, especially at first, it's super fun to just like camp out and be together all the time and maybe not see the friends or have the friends over as much. Mm. I think it's super important to like, as soon as you move in, keep having your friends nights, have him go out with his friends, have friends over, like do things separately um, and maintain that energy that you would have if you weren't living together. Mm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Keep mm -hmm. that going. I would say. Well, that's pretty much it guys. I mean, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. no, I mean, I've, I just feel like you nailed every perfect part about that. Like, you know, following your gut. Yeah. And thank you guys for coming. Um, <laughs> no, following your gut, not following like whatever it tells you to do. Mm -hmm. Um, cause every relationship's custom and specific. Yeah. All the stuff she talked. I'm, I'm going to come at it from a quick, easy, practical angle and bring up Which Dad does. an idea. I don't know if people do this, mm -hmm. but what about in a, following everything she says, but on the actual physical aspect of this, what about packing weak bags and doing weak? Like, like say you're going to move into his place or he's going to move into your place. Whoever place you're going to move into, uh, this is assuming you're not have to get a separate place. Let's say one of you are going to move into each other's place. Go for two weeks. Go for a week, three weeks, a month. Go for kind of like an extended period of time, not like a weekend, right? But go for like an extended period of time. Say, I'm going to spend the next three weeks at your house and let's let's kind of live together for three weeks. You mean before they officially before move in? Before you officially move in. Mm -hmm. And just kind of, just how you date before you do anything. You know what I mean? You, everything's like in a thing. Why not like just spend three weeks at the house and just be like, let's just kind of move in for like a month and just kind of vibe and see how we feel. And see, see and, then, and then you can see, oh, do we need more room? Oh, there's some red flags here. I think we need to kind of figure out each other's vibes for like, why don't people, I don't know if people do that. Maybe they do, but like. I feel like it'd be a smart way to not be like, yeah, let's sign a lease and jump in all the way. I'm not saying that would be the bad move, but it could be a nice way to kind of test drive maybe while you look at apartments mm -hmm. or whatever, just spend a month in one of your guys' spots together and I just, and just vibe. And I think, and, and then maybe, you know, if shit goes weird, you can just leave. And, and maybe over. you already, I think a lot of people already are like, almost essentially moved in together like they're anyway. They're spending so much you time know, with each you're other. You're spending at least five nights a week but over at one of your places. But where you're dedicated, like you're there. Yeah, you're no, I think that's a great idea. leaving in every once in a while. It's like you go three weeks straight, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. Not on vacation, at the house. And, and you really, can't leave. And, and, you have, and you have to quit work and live together and stare at each other for two hours a day. But I don't know. It might be an interesting thing to try. Yeah, you might as well. Like you said too, it might be um, uh, a good way too to see like, oh... I think it would be better if we were doing well, but I can tell since we're at your place, you kind of feel like it's yours. Maybe it'd be better for us to get a, a new place, place together. Yes. So it's like equally both of ours and there's not that dynamic going on or whatever. I small think it would definitely, things. Oh, I didn't realize how clean you were or I didn't yeah. realize how messy you were or whatever. And little small things where you're like, okay, let's talk about this where mm -hmm. you don't want to do it when you're like, have the panic of like, we signed the lease, we're locked in. Yeah. It might be nice to kind of test some of those things out. I think that's a great idea. Anyway, worth a try. 
Well, I think that's a great idea. And I, like I said too, you were talking about bringing in, uh, keeping like the excitement going. I really do believe when you maintain your independence in a relationship, that does keep excitement going um, a lot. Uh, not changing your dynamic just because you live together, maintaining that same dynamic that you had before, scheduling date nights, being intentional Mm. about that, being intentional about going out with friends separately, being intentional about having your own separate hobbies. Like all these things, I think, keep life exciting and keep conversations going. And yeah. Agree. Love you all. We love you all. We will see you on Friday to dive back into the scandal of it all in this reunion. Oh my God, who knows? We shall see. We love you, family. Love you guys. See you on Friday. Bye. Bye.